Welcome back to the sweatshop boys and girls in today's video we're going to be working on this 2009 Subaru Forester. What we're doing in today's video is we are replacing the radiator on this thing. Unfortunately the vehicle overheated and had that stupid little indicator flashing red at it which of course in my opinion is way too late to tell you that the thing is getting hot. Hopefully Subaru will see this and actually put a goddamn gauge back into their cars. Anyhow nonetheless we need to replace this thing in order to remedy the issue. This here is definitely a job that you can do in the driveway at home to save yourself some money and like we're doing today we actually had a used radiator so we're going to be using that to remedy the issue that this thing has typically i would recommend just getting a new radiator but unfortunately the funds are kind of tight for this customer so we're trying to help her out that being said, if you are going to get a used radiator, boys and girls, you should do what I have done and power wash the thing. Make sure you get off any dirt and grime that is on the old radiator. You don't necessarily need to swap the fans out. Of course, do test them before you put them back in. And of course, inspect the thing for any leaks, cracks, or issues that tissues won't solve. Of course, our first step, boys and girls, is going to be to open the hood. I'll take a peek at what's going on and I'll show you exactly what the issue was with this thing and how this overheating situation and tow bill could have been avoided. As you can see, we have some sprayage happening in this vicinity here. And this is, of course, because we have the leak and an overheating situation spraying the coolant onto the engine. Now, I know that there was a small crack with this thing, so it has been seeping for a while. Unfortunately, this whole situation could have been avoided if the customer had the time and the funds to repair it earlier. But, you know, life gets in the way and that's just how things go sometimes for for people and yeah best thing you can do whenever you have a situation where you see a potential leak or you see this sort of crusting here you gotta deal with these sort of things sooner rather than later now i'm gonna turn the camera around and i'll get you a closer look at the crack and where it was and we'll show you what the crusting is on the front of the uh, radiator here and there you can see some of the crusting that's happening this is essentially an indication that your cooling system has really crappy coolant in it that's acidic this happens over time naturally it's not that someone's put in the wrong thing necessarily or that you know there is a specific issue with the cooling system but if you don't take care of that sort of stuff by changing out the coolant it leads to issues in the cooling system now what i'm going to do is go ahead and remove this so we can get a better look we're also going to need to remove that stupid thing so that we can get our radiator out this here is the oe style of clip so hopefully you guys have two of these at home of course this being the other one that right there is the oe style of clip with that guy out of the way we can see we have quite a bit of coolant in this area here all right wonderful now it's extremely hard to see here but there is our crack right there hopefully you guys can see it on camera i can't really tell because i'm looking at it on a really small screen so that is our crack and it has been seeping fluid for a little bit and of course the remnants of the fluid is blown away by all the fluid that must have gushed out of there but uh yeah you'll have to take my word for it boys and girls there was a crack there and that is what you want to look for every time you open up the hood just peek around and look at stuff to make sure it's not leaking that way you don't end up in a situation where your car overheats and you have to get it towed especially because these stupid engines are really really expensive and no one wants to do a head gasket on these stupid things the second time around it just sucks so yeah Okay, with all that rambling out of the way, hopefully you found it useful. Of course, we can go ahead now and start removing the radiator. Of course, before I get started with today's video, boys and girls, do me a big favor and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell, of course, so you never miss one of my new videos. Now let's get started with removing the radiator. First thing you're going to need is a 12 mil. You're going to grab your 12 mil and remove your radiator clamps. This guy here is what I'm talking about. It is the bracket that clamps your radiator to your goddamn rat support. 
It's going to be a long one, boys and girls. I'm tired, and my English is uh, evading me today. So, yeah. With that out of the way, while you have your car in this position, what you can do before you crawl underneath it is take that guy out. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass to move things around down on the driver's side where your ATF lines are. If you've got a stick shift, leave it in there. It won't make much of a difference. Kind of hard to show you on camera, but there is a little tab here. Get yourself a screwdriver, push down on the tab. The tab, of course, wants to go this way. And then at the same time, you want to pull your bottle away from the radiator. Of course, disconnect this guy here. Yank this whole stupid thing out. And make sure you refill this stupid thing before you put it into the car because it's damn near impossible to see what level the stupid thing's at. Your next step, boys and girls, is going to be to take this clip off on either side of the vehicle if you have those little trays that are underneath the vehicle to stop dirt and crap getting in. Also helps with fuel economy and a bunch of other crap, but hey, you know. Do that on both sides. Then send the vehicle up all the way if you're doing this on a hoist and if you're doing this on the floor, well, uh, crawl underneath because now you got to pull some other crap off and you're potentially going to get wet. This here is the shielding that I was talking about and the last thing you have to do is get that clip out as well as remove this 12 millimeter bolt. A little bit of anti-seize and grease will go a long way. Unfortunately, those things don't get touched very much, so no one does that sort of thing very much on those uh, bolts. You don't necessarily need a clip remover, but uh, it makes life a lot easier. You can use a flat screwdriver, but you probably end up breaking this stupid thing. Anyhow, with those stupid trays out of the way, you can see what fresh hell you've now opened yourself up to. Anyhow, what you need to do is disconnect these little guys here. You're going to need a right angle pick or a flat screwdriver to do so. I find the right angle pick just a little bit easier. Then you're going to need a number three Phillips bit just to take out the drain plug here. Uh, when you do take it out, obviously the car should not be hot. If it is, you're probably going to get burnt, so don't take Take it off when it's hot there is another connector on the other side that you'll also have to disconnect it is exactly the same process and it's for the other fan now with your radiator draining boys and girls you can go ahead and remove this guy here and that guy there that'll release this steel heat shield that protects your atf lines from frying because your catalytic converter is right here now grab yourself a 10 mil boys and girls a ratcheting wrench is just good enough you can get in there also with a shallow socket and a ratchet on this side easily, but on the other side, it's a bit tough. So ratcheting wrench is fine. Now be careful because this guy can be quite sharp. And uh, as you can see, my knuckles are in close contact and may potentially get skinned and I'm not interested in that. So yeah, you know, be careful boys and girls. You don't want to end up with some knuckles that are bleeding. Holy shit, those are tight. Ow. Also, the heat shield for the catalytic converter is very fucking sharp. Oh man, I think that chewed my nail a bit. Whatever. Now, as you can see, boys and girls, we can now access our ATF lines. We have one here and one here. So what we're going to need to do is get our favorite vice grip so we can clamp these little suckers and pull them out of the way. Now you can hear the radiator draining in the background. Specifically, I didn't start draining it because it just, it's annoying in the background when I'm editing. And uh, I also did not take off the radiator cap specifically because it slows it down. Sometimes it doesn't even drain altogether, which is really nice because then you can lower the car, move this guy, this stupid drain bucket out of the way and put in a smaller drain pan and uh, collect it and then dispose of it. Yeah, there's really nothing exciting about that. But uh, you can go ahead and open up your radiator cap by either climbing up on a ladder or just getting out from underneath the car if you're doing it on the floor. Now I'm going to show you on the one side because it's exactly the same process as the other side. What you need to do, boys and girls, is get yourself a vice grip like that. Something with a bit of a wide jaw 
across so that it can clamp both sides equally without, you know, springing back or wanting to come off. And just wiggle the clamp out of the way. You also want to clamp that hose so that it doesn't piss fluid everywhere because, hey, you know, transmission fluid nowadays is as expensive as gold. So, yeah. What you're going to do is get yourself a pair of hose clamps like this or you can use a vice grip. Uh, needle nose vice grip that is just be very careful with the vice grip you don't want to over clamp or pressure the hose too much because you can damage it and that would well that would lead to issues that tissues just won't solve grab it oh, try to clamp it as best you can and as equally as possible like so yeah and just wiggle it back and forth gently boys and girls you don't want to be a crazy person if that doesn't work and it doesn't break free well get your vice grip and persuade it and of course when I say persuade it I mean gently you know you're just trying to make it loose it doesn't want to cooperate here now if that fails altogether and you just can't get it to go and it feels like you're gonna tear that rubber don't tear the rubber get yourself one of these it's a pick that essentially will slide in between the holes and the pipe and then just work it in there like so back and forth and around try to get deeper as you continue to work the pick in anyhow once you get this guy loose what you're going to do is of course pull it off just do the wiggle wiggle it will eventually come loose Oh my god. It's either these stupid things are getting stronger and stronger as the years go by, or I'm just getting weaker and weaker, son. And I think it's the latter. Yeah. It was a wiggle wiggle. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let whatever remnants drain out of there. And uh, now you can go ahead and repeat the same hellish, uh, hellish thing on the other side there. Um, also, don't forget to disconnect those guys. What you want to do is kind of just compress one side like so and then roll, roll it out. Don't just yank it out because if you yank it out, you can tear the holes or damage it and, and nobody got time for that shit. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side now. I'll see you guys back soon. We're going to let this thing drain out without the radiator cap so it doesn't just annoyingly splatter into my face. Now you can probably hear the radiator fluid draining off in the distance there. Essentially what we're looking at is the lower radiator hose right here. Obviously I've got all this disconnected and I've got a huge drain pan that is collecting all this crap. The key to success here boys and girls is to let the radiator drain off for at least 5 to 10 minutes. The reason being is because when you go ahead and release this hose it's going to want to pee all over you because this is the lowest point in the system and there's usually at least two to three hundred milliliter worth of fluid in this hose that's stuck at about this level so do yourself a favor let it drain off for at least five to ten minutes and then you go ahead and release this clamp and you can take this hose off. This hose is pretty much the same process that I showed you with the transmission line. You're going to have to get a pick to want to release this guy because it's not going to want to release on its own. Then you go ahead and inspect your clamp. If it's not rusted and it's in good shape, you can go ahead and reuse it. Now you can use a worm clamp, but you got to make sure you get a good quality worm clamp because some of them that I've seen have failed. And I had someone actually comment about this and in the past I've been using stuff that's been made in the US and I've never had an issue to be honest I guess it is an issue out there if you get cheap stuff so you know just for that and what the person had commented that you know they come apart and blah 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 I've seen a few videos where people have complained about it and yeah so you don't want to be in that situation either get the dealership clamp or get a brand name good quality worm clamp and you'll be fine Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. I've uh, taken the drain plug and installed it back into the radiator so that we don't have it pissing all over the floor. I have shifted the drain pan directly underneath this stupid little radiator hose. I have in my left hand this thing here, which is going to help take off the clamp. And it's taken me another, I don't know, five minutes to reposition the camera and all that fun stuff for you boys and girls at home. So uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button to support my work because uh, this shit ain't as easy as y'all think, but and girls grab your vice grip or your clamp removal tool whatever you got and clamp down on this stupid thing the reason why I like vice grips is because they're not as cumbersome as a clamp removal tool and they lock slide this guy back as far as you can get it okay
and then release it. Make sure your fingers are not in the vicinity of the clamp because the clamp is dangerous and its whole purpose in life is to bust your fingers or hand. Don't ask me how I know it. I hate those goddamn clamps. As you can see, it's not happening. I'll turn my light on so I can see what the hell's happening. Grab a pick like this and then just work it in slowly. You want to be very careful with the pick. You do not want to damage your radiator holes. A lot of people do do that. You'd be surprised how often. And then as you move your radiator holes or, or this pick around the radiator holes, uh, you want to try and move the radiator holes periodically in a circular motion to see when it actually releases. Okay, now you don't want to hear any tearing, popping, or ripping because that means you're doing it wrong and you're mashing up the holes, which is uh, not what we want to do. And there we go. We have our radiator holes now cooperating and it is now moving. Wiggle it back and forth until you get it to the end of the holes. God damn, man. It's so tight. Ugh, just come off the car, bitch. Oh, you fucker. Make sure your arms and shoulders work very well before you do this sort of work. Sometimes you feel like you put 6,000 pounds of pressure on these fucking hoses to get them to move. Okay. Yeah. You fucker. There we go. Okay. When you get it right to the edge, boys and girls, you're going to get this guy right underneath it as best you can. You want at least 4 to 5 inches on either side of the hose. So you're talking about a 12 inch across diameter bucket. Hold it up no farther than like 5 or 6 inches from the stupid hose because if you don't, it's going to splatter all everywhere and it, usually on your face and right into your mouth where the glycol or where this fucking coolant is not supposed to end up is where it's going to end up. Okay. Slowly pull it back and let it bleed off because if you just pull the whole fucking thing off It's gonna splatter see it just wants to go everywhere because it's an uncooperative bitch Fucker. Yeah, there we go. We got a nice stream there now. Just let this bitch bleed out All right, it has released There we go See it's not that hard Right? What we gotta do is get a big drain pan so we can lower the car. And if you're doing this on the floor, God, that sucks. Uh, but you already have the drain pan there and then you can go up to the top and yank the radiator out. Okay, now what we need to do is of course remove our upper rat holes. Of course, you're going to employ the use of your handy dandy vice grip. We're going to clamp down on this stupid thing. Subaru, for whatever reason, does not make the clamp big enough to fit over the hose quite easily. So, I find it a bit easier just to pull the assembly off with the clamp in the same place that it usually would be. The reason being, of course, is because you don't want to damage the neck on your radiator. Of course, we don't really care about this radiator, but in damaging the neck, you could potentially damage your radiator hose. So, yeah. I hope that makes sense because it sort of made sense to me at some point when I said I was going to say it in my head. And there you go. And just scrape this shit off. Don't let it go into your cooling system. That way when you put your new fluid in, it doesn't have to dissolve that crap and eventually turn into it. Release this guy here. Get yourself a small bungee cord. Well, this bungee cord looks a little bit handicapped, but whatever. It'll do the job. You just want to pull that guy back a bit there. There we go. Now, what we need to do is get ourselves a Phillips screwdriver so we can remove this little plastic piece here. You also need your little pocket sized flat screwdriver so that you can release the tabs that hold this guy. You also need a clip remover because that thing ain't coming out my hand. It feels like I'm going to rip my finger off trying to pull it. There we go. Oh. I said get the screwdriver, but I'm too lazy to go out, go over there and walk to get it. So I'm just going to yank it out by hand. And the tabs that I'm talking about you need to release are these guys here, right there and there. And there and there. Set that guy aside safely. This one's going to the garbage anyhow because it overheated, so don't really care. Just don't drop the new one. Now, that's another thing too, boys and girls. If you are getting a new radiator and it's overheated, it's best just to replace the radiator cap because you can damage the spring that pushes down on the little valve here. I'll show you. So, there is a spring inside here. 
that allows this guy to collapse like that. Uh, what happens is, is this guy holds, is this in, well, it's in stupid metric, which Canada, we're one of the only countries where we use the metric system as well as the goddamn imperial system. So I don't know what 108 kilopascals of pressure is, but it's probably like 15 PSI. Uh, that's the pressure that's supposed to be exerted. Now that spring tension can change because of the amount of heat. So better not to risk it. I mean, this one looks in good condition. Uh, the rubber itself is in terrible shape and whatnot, but for a $10, $20 part, you don't want your stupid car to overheat or have another issue where it, you know, doesn't operate the way it should. So yeah, I mean, this is supposed to be a short video where I don't have to spend hours editing, but if I keep coming up with little tips like that, Jesus, we're going to sit there for another eight hours tomorrow. Okay. On the bright side, boys and girls, our pile of crap radiator is ready to come out. If you do have a new radiator, you can go ahead and reuse your fans. That's not a problem. Don't be a prick, radiator fan. There we go. There you go, boys and girls. I hope that shot was satisfying because setting up the camera for it was a pain in the ass. Now, with it out of the way is a great time to inspect for any issues with your AC condenser and you can also get a nice look at the front of the engine to make sure there's no crap going on there. I'm going to spend some time looking around and then I'm going to go ahead and put in my radiator. Now boys and girls, go ahead. Make sure your grommets that are right down there are in place on both sides so that your radiator doesn't rest on the steel because that would also contribute to your radiator failing prematurely. You can go ahead now, grab your radiator and gently slide it into place. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Okay. Hope you guys see what I'm doing here. Now with the radiator holes, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but you gotta be gentle with it. Don't lose your temper with it. Let's go on the opposite side here. There we go. Struggling today, boys and girls. This bastard came out quite easily, but she don't wanna go back in. There we go. Now what you gotta do is reach below, make sure that it's sitting properly, and put stuff back together. We're in on this side. Now we're in on that side. First things first. Radiator holes. Open it up or release the tension on the clamp. Sorry. <laughs> Open it up. And then you can go ahead and apply tension again. Now these, t these stupid things have a lock. So what you want to do is make sure it doesn't get jammed on the lock and then spring open. If your fingers are anywhere near it when that happens, you're going to get hurt. So be very careful with that. And now it's uh, anything you want to put back in, you can boys and girls. Grab that guy. Yes. Don't forget this. Yes. Grab your radiator bracket. Grab yourself your radiator bolts, anti-seize them, and then you can put them back into place. Not sure what the torque is, I wouldn't exceed 15 foot-pounds. Rule of thumb is you want to make sure that it's not so loose that it comes out and it's not so tight that you break it. Remove this thing before it becomes one with your engine in a bad way and then you end up with issues that tissues won't solve. You can now go ahead and put this back on if you're not going to power wash your engine bay. Uh, I think I might give this one a spritz just to make sure that it's, you know, well, not disgusting. And then we'll put it all back together. Next step, put this thing back up. Okay, boys and girls, we have decided to start with this side here, the driver's side, and take care of all the mess. First thing you want to do is make sure there is no crap or crud in your connector. Go ahead, slide it back into place. Ah, uh, yes, the satisfying click is what we want to hear. Then what you want to do is just route your transmission hoses so that they're out of your way. Then what you want to do is grab your lower radiator hose and sneak it back into place. God damn it, why? There we go. Do the wiggle wiggle. Okay, now grab that vice grip and do the clamping. It's a wiggle, it's a wiggle wiggle. 
Oh, yeah, baby. All right, do the twist test, and if it's not twisting, you're good to go. Of course, don't reef on the thing. It's just a goddamn, it's a radiator hose, okay? Now, we can go ahead and put back our transmission line. Yay! Take this guy out of the way, and then wiggle this one into place. It's kind of hard because it's short, and the bracket's right there. Okay, with it in place, you can release this guy here. Be careful, you might get hit by the other side. Now, don't worry about that clamp. Go ahead and put the other one in so that you don't get hit with transmission fluid coming through the radiator because you've opened up the line. Put your holes back into place. Grab your vice grip again, boys and girls, and you can put your clamp where it's supposed to be. Make sure your hose is on all the way. There we go. The twist test you should feel some tension and then of course do the same on the other side I don't think that's in frame but that doesn't really matter you get the idea wonderful now do yourself a favor boys and girls take a rag this thing here is the least absorbent rag ever I swear to God it, it just swishes fluid around so I'm gonna get another one I'm gonna just tap everything down and once I get rid of most of the water and oil and crap that's down here then we're gonna spray it with some brake clean okay I shall be back now boys and girls very important if this guy is rotten and has completely rusted away on your vehicle you should get one do not just get rid of this thing it actually has quite a good purpose and will help with the longevity of your new radiator or brand used radiator or brand used radiator and will definitely help with the longevity of the rubber hoses that contain your transmission fluid so unless you want to buy a transmission because your hoses crack and leak out replace this thing if it is rotted don't drop the bolts like I just did make sure your hoses are in securely and nice and not rubbing up against anything and then thread this guy in now I got to go and get the bolt I just dropped found it now remember these are a self tapping or really coarse thread so they should go in relatively easy if they don't twist in easy don't continue to twist take it apart and see what's going on because you're threading into the plastic on the tank of the radiator and you don't want to break it because you know that would lead to a leak and just snug it up you don't have to make it tight you know and I don't think there is a torque spec for this thing just don't break it and don't round it out because if you do well it's not going to be tight i think you can put in a nut and bolt but if you screw it up but yeah i mean don't don't screw it up and you won't have to to do that and of course your last connector boys and girls we can go ahead now lower the car and fill this thing up Remember, you should always hear the click. If you don't hear the click, something's wrong, and that shit's probably going to come out and give you a headache. Oh yeah, boys and girls, before you lower the car, make sure you put this stupid thing back in on either side. Remember, two clips and one screw. Anti-seize. That's better. <sighs> Yay. Okay, boys and girls, now is the time to go ahead and fill this thing up because you can actually see what the level is there. You can't see it when it's in the car. It's a real pain in the ass. You want to fill it up just a little bit higher than the full mark. The reason being is because there's always going to be a little bit of air trapped in the system. So when your radiator cap actually does its job and allows the air to purge and then the coolant to be sucked back in, this level will go a little bit lower. Make sure you top it up. Then you're going to locate this little tab here and you're going to locate the hole that receives that little dowel or pin or whatever the hell you want to call it and slide it in once it's in place you're going to slide this side here in like so and then push this side in just give it a wiggle make sure it is locked in there then go ahead grab your overflow tube and push it on boys and girls and we are good to go now all that's left to do is for me to fill this system up and i don't think you guys want to watch me do something that's really exciting like that so i'm gonna go ahead fill it up off camera and then i will show you how to bleed this thing so basically i want to show you something with the funnel i have this funnel that basically fits the neck of the radiator you can get the easy fill sort of stuff and that makes life a lot easier but i don't have any more money left to spend on tools because you know i got a family and shit and whatnot so if you want you can go to my patreon and support me there with a coffee a day or something that'd be great um <laughs> anyhow just you know what in all seriousness just you guys watching the video is 
Fuck you, Scanner. That was a sentimental moment for me. Anyhow, as I was saying is in all truthfulness, just you guys subscribing and supporting and actually watching the videos does mean quite a lot to me. So thank you. Now, before I start getting all mushy on your shit, pour your fluid into this funnel and make sure that you just have it at the level of the mouth of the radiator neck. So essentially, you don't want it any higher than that because when you start this thing up and you start running it, it is going to want to bubble out. Now, as it comes up like so, squeeze it like this to work out any air bubbles and then just continue this process. And I'd say right now we're good enough to go ahead and start this thing up. Now, as you heard my rude scanner in the background there interrupting me as I was having a heart to heart, you need that scanner in order to tell you, shut up. Shut up, I know, shut up. You need that scanner to tell you that your engine temperature is fine and dandy because this stupid thing has that dumbass indicator which I can't stand. So I'll show you the indicator and then I'll show you the scan tool. Here you can see when I turn the key on the stupid indicator. It's that one that's red currently and now shows up as cold. That stupid thing is just the dumbest design by Subaru, unfortunately. It doesn't come on to like, I think it's 130 or 135 degrees Celsius, which is way too much. In my opinion, anything more than 110 degrees of constant running when you're on the way to heating up your engine, overheating just is too much. You, that's how you blow it. That's where this stupid contraption comes in. This here stands for engine coolant temperature. As you can see, we're at 22 degrees, which is a lot nicer than what it is in the actual shop currently it's 15 degrees which it, it, it's cold what we need to do boys and girls is start this thing up and monitor this temperature if you don't have a cheap scanner i suggest getting one because if you overheat your engine you're you're gonna have issues we need to turn this guy all the way to the hot side doesn't matter if it's 300 degrees outside it has to be on the hot side so that you know you have heat coming out of those vents put it up to the vent side and then you can run it if you like the lower the better the reason being is because the stupid thing will heat up faster now go ahead and start your car what you're gonna do basically is run the thing until it comes up to operating temperature continue to monitor this so that it doesn't exceed 100 degrees Celsius that's just too hot keep an eye on the level of the fluid in the funnel so that it doesn't overflow or isn't low once your radiator fans come on and you've seen a bunch of bubbles come out of your vehicle most likely you're good to go and you don't have an airlock now of course make sure your air conditioning system is off because that'll turn your fans on which you don't want but you want to make sure that your fans come on that way you know that the system has come up to operating temperature on its own and that you have fans that work. I'll see you back in like 15 minutes when this thing gets hot. Well, good sign here. We have some heat in the cabin and we're only at 50 degrees. Wish you guys had feel of vision, but you'll just have to trust me. Well, it's currently at 60 degrees and slowly heating up. There is a little bit of coolant down in the base here of the funnel, so you don't need to add if you're using this particular funnel. If you have one of those easy fills, well, you don't need to do shit. It's it's all there for you it just makes life easy one day my friends one day well we're coming up to the end of the day boys and girls and it's starting to get a bit dark outside so uh, I'm not gonna wait to uh, power wash the engine bay we're gonna have to do that another time so we're gonna go ahead and install this make sure you slide it in and then just push the clips home it really is just that simple it's why I deep down really like Subaru fucking awesome car company I like them all to be honest anyhow whatever it's... maybe I should do a podcast maybe you guys might want to hear my stupid thoughts anyhow boys and girls We'll see you later. In about 10 minutes, and uh, essentially, you can see where the level is. It's right up at the kind of like halfway point of the funnel. What you want to do when it gets to this is just squeeze the radiator hose. And you'll see those bubbles come out of there, which is good. We want the bubbles to come out. We're at 88 degrees Celsius. It's taken forever. So if you're like me and a little bit impatient, you can get into the car and rev it up a little bit. I would not exceed 1500 RPM because, well, you don't want to blow your engine up, especially if you have a nice pocket of air somewhere in the system that's you know buy your head gasket and wants to burn through it potentially so yeah don't beat the crap out of it don't exceed 15 to 2000 rpm uh, and you'll be okay I just wait until your fans come on oh baby 89 we're getting there yeah all that smoking is normal because uh we power wash the radiator so basically all the water is now evaporating and coming off if only it would happen a little bit quicker 
Subaru. Now remember, boys and girls, you don't want to squeeze the hell out of this thing because you can damage them. Yeah, just, you know, just a little bit, you know, like, just like that. Nice and gentle. Now you can see as I squeeze it, there's very little bubbles coming through, which is a good thing. That means the system is doing well. We're still at 94. God damn, this is taking forever. You know, most of this shit's going to get cut out. Okay, here we go. Stupid things up at 95, and as you can see, because of the cooling effect, the fluid is now disappearing. Get your radiator cap, pull this guy out of place, put your radiator cap back into place, boys and girls. We are done. That's a thumbs up for Jimmy. Well, a few things need to happen before we can call this thing done. Of course, they're not going to happen today. It'll be the following morning when your car is nice and cold. What you want to do is, of course, make sure it's on a level surface. You want to take off the radiator cap. Make sure the vehicle is cold. If it is not cold, you're going to get scolded and it's going to suck. The other thing you're going to need to do besides checking the level in the radiator is check the level over here to make sure that it is full top up as needed of course it's going to be kind of hard to check the level so what i suggest doing is taking a flashlight shining it on top here and then poking your head or your eyes down in this region and you'll be able to see whether you actually have a full reservoir of course before you let the car go or before you're done with your own car make sure you inspect it for any leaks or issues and then when you go and heat it up the second time you can check to see if you have pressure in the system by simply squeezing the top radiator hose of course it will be hot so you know if you're overly sensitive to that sort of stuff don't touch it if it's slightly firm you are good to go that means your radiator cap is doing its job okay i think that's all the information i need to give you um if not i'm sure people will let me know in the comments below yeah good job jimmy well boys and girls that's all she wrote for this one hopefully you found the video informative as well as entertaining of course if you did please like share and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos and as always thanks for watching we will see you in the next one what we're doing on today ah, for fuck. what we're doing in today's video boys and girls is we are too many boys and girls damn it starts to rise the indicator unfortunately just blinks at you when it gets way too hot in my opinion i don't know what the fuck i'm saying i'm just tired and fucking retardedly tired okay fuck am i saying man and here we go boys and girls you get hell for fuck's sake this is retarded i'm just tired thinking too much shit and my fucking brain is doesn't have the capacity to think this much shit let's fire this fucking camera up again that's uh, two minutes of my life i'll never fucking get back i'm not gonna complain about the subaru gauge what the fuck man just shut up jimmy this is supposed to be a short video so i don't spend six hours editing basically the radiator bracket that clamps off for fuck's sake be careful though, because this guy likes to swallow gloves and take nails with it when you pry it back. So I suggest getting a screwdriver, like I should have done from the beginning. This is a fucking terrible video. This was fucking pointless. As well as remove this 12 volt. 12 volt? Oh my god. Who the fuck is my clip remover, man? Son of a bitch. I just fucking had it, man. Oh, fuck you. This guy here and that guy there. Essentially, oh fuck, I look drunk now on camera. Tell them a tent for fuck's sakes, man. You can get in really small. You can get... Fuck me, man. Stupid fucking thing. Now, as you can see, we have access to our air, our air conditioning lines. Oh my God. When we're editing, when I'm editing. Well, don't tear the rubber. Get yourself one of this. What? Oh, come on, don't splatter on me. Fucking radiator. Oh, it's splattering all over my face. So much fucking fun. It's either these things are getting stronger and stronger as the years. Do yourself your okay there, bud. <laughs> fucking idiot. Ooh, 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 ooh. There's that fucking compressor. Subaru. Um, oh, what the fuck are these idiots doing over there, man? You know what? I'll be back, boys and girls. Fuck. I don't know why, but they don't make this neck very slim. And getting this guy with the radiator hose in place off or over this little section of the neck is... I don't know what the fuck I just said. Fuck sakes. Subaru, for whatever reason, didn't make this clamp big enough. Thanks, Hoist. I didn't fucking need that, you prick. Place that it usually would be. The reason being is...
Canada, we're one of the only countries where we use metrics and slide around into place. Oh, one thing to do before you do that is make sure the little grommets are down. So the grommets that hold, ah, uh, crap. The grommets that hold this guy here and this guy here in place, make sure, well, you won't see that because it's not there. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Hey, man, don't, don't, don't fuck with me right now, just. Okay, boys and girls, we've decided to start with a mess on this side and start taking care of crap. What you're gonna do is make sure your electrical connectors are dry and free of any bullshit. Then what you're gonna do is, <laughs> I can't say bullshit, that's terrible. I'm gonna deter new subscribers because they're gonna be like, this guy's got a body mount. Yeah, terrible. I can't use this guy's fucking video because shit. How am I gonna watch this with people? Shit, man fucking compressor then go ahead grab your lower radiator hose and sneak that stubborn son of a bitch oh god what is that stupid thing two cups and one chick or some shit like that i don't know two cups one chick or two girls one cup or some fuckery i don't remember whatever stupidness oh fuck sand in the eye is always fun fuck you super fuck you fuck you continental fuck you well that's Fuck you, car. Fuck you. And when your radiator cap does its job and sucks the ear out of the system, or wait, or sucks ear back in, oh, for fuck's sakes, or sucks the... It's very hard to do this. Hop into the car, boys and girls, and start this bitch up. Uh, I would not exceed 1,500 M. M. You see there, we still got some water in the system, but... Now you guys are gonna look at me with my hand in there and you're gonna be like, what the fuck is he doing? I don't know, to tell you the truth, boys and girls. Maybe it's all the fumes I inhale. I don't know. I feel like I don't know what the hell I'm doing most days now. <laughs> Quickly be scolded and overheated by your own car. That sounded stupid. I think that's it for this shit.